Adonai Yahweh Shemar peace and grace to the 12 lost tribes of the nation of Israel who are scattered abroad. Greetings on the rehearsal of the Shabbat day. So today, people, we're going into a very important chapter of the Bible as we do our Revelation series of the things that are going to come upon the earth by the hands of our Creator Yahweh through Mahasha Jesus Christ. So let's go to the opening scripture of today, which is in Psalms. 102. Let's go to Psalms 102, verse 25. This is old prophecy, a prophecy from the days of old. It says, Of old, as I laid the foundation of the earth, who made the heavens and earth that we live on, and the universe, and space, and galaxies? All you gotta do is open up this great. Genesis chapter 1 and it give you all the answers you need of the creation of the heavens and the earth so the most high put that in there so that we can have an understanding of the times and the end that he made and laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of his hands now the heavens that they're talking about in this chapter is talking about the kingdoms of men with the creation of the most highest earth and all things he has made. So as we read on, you get an understanding of that. Because it's, it's talking about kingdoms. See what it says here? Verse 26. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. For instance, 100 great mysteries. Y'all remember the Polynesians, children of Jacobs? They had great monuments and great statues unto gods that they made by men's hands. And these gods made by men's hands fell. You go over there now, that's why they write these books in the, uh, these great history books, history, the hundred greatest mysteries on the planet. They got all these different empires in here. They got the Inca Empire, which is the tribe of all. Not found. They got Egypt. The children of Ham. And many more in here. So these archaeology books, these so-called white scientists go around the world and they are mystified at what the creator has done and what the other nations have done. And they look at it, and they study it, and they say, where did these people come from? How did this get here? It's all written in the Bible. Through the works of the Most High. See? That's the answer. And it says, uh, it shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Every empire that fell, Yahweh was in charge of everything that was falling down and being risen up. Precept to this. Daniel chapter 7. And that vision of Daniel chapter 7, Yahweh, who lives forever and ever, he doesn't get tired, he doesn't die, he's not like flesh, he's not like us, he's not like kings of the earth who come and go, but the Most High says, I, Yahweh, am the same, the same power in the Old Testament is the same power in the New Testament. He ain't changed. We have. That's what like the scripture say. Has a nation changed their power? Yes, we have. That's why we don't, don't know anything anymore. Daniel chapter 7, this is for the elect that's waking up into the truth and finding out what's going on. It says this in, in verse 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down in the ancients of days this sin, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. You know what that's talking about? The most high. He has an afro, pure woolly hair. Didn't he say in the Bible, Yahweh shall say in, in St. John 14, those that have seen me have seen the Father. So if the most high would materialize down here on this earth, he would look like us. He said he made us in his image. And when you read in the scriptures, his hair is woolly. And he was sitting on his throne in the time of the Babylonians or in this time of Daniel. And all the kingdoms of men, 
he was going to take down in his vision. And he was showing Daniel. And they all came and fell. But Yahweh stayed on his throne. He stayed up there with his council in heaven, with the 24 elders and the four archangels around him, and all the thousands and thousands of angels sitting around his throne. He's the same. But these kingdoms of men, he changes them when he wants. That's what we got to realize. See, that's why it says over in Job and uh, in the Psalms. See what it says here? This is what he's talking about. Psalms 102, verse 26. He says, uh, And it shall wax old like a garment, and as a vesture, thou shalt change them, and they shall be changed. They're going to wax old. So today we're going to show you the waxing old of Babylon, the great America, and the subject today is a new heaven and new earth. And the Most High is getting ready to do his works according to his plans, according to what he want to do, when he want to do it, when the time come, ain't nothing nobody can do about it. When the Babylonians fell, is there anything they can do about it? He turned that Babylonian king into an eagle with feathers coming out of his back. He made him eat grass on the ground like an ox, and that man suffered before he died because he went up against the Most High and the laws. So in this last time, shall America pay the same. In these last days, as it says in the Bible, the heavens are the works of his hands, right? So let's go into the books, 2 Peter's chapter 3. And like a garment, he shall change them. What kind of change is coming? You hear these politicians, Barack Obama. Oh, we're going to go for a change. Negroes ran behind that, and what happened? There was a turkey shoot. Every week, a Negro was getting shot. Every time you turn around, a Negro was getting killed. Why? Because they went after a false prophet, a false vision, and a false shot, savior. Barack Obama was not the savior. He was not going to save Israel. He couldn't do a damn thing for us like he couldn't tie his shoe. Without the most high, giving him power on this earth. So every leader on this planet that comes and goes by the will of the most high, they are not going to save us. As it says in the book of Lamentations, we look for a nation to save us instead of looking to Yahweh, to Yahweh shot, that saves. And it's the difference between us and our people on this side that are ignorant to this truth. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it says this. Verse 3, knowing this first, that there should come in the last days, scoffers. You know what a scoffer is? A mocker. Somebody's going to mock, somebody's going to talk talk contrary to doctrine, they're going to mock you. They're going to say, you Israelites are crazy for believing in a black man coming down here to save us from heaven. That's what they're going to say. They're going to say, hey boy, why don't you go to church and make money like all the rest of the pastors. They're going to say, why don't you join this group? Why don't you join that group? We're not going to join them. Why? Because that's not the vision of the Bible. We go on by the vision of this book and law and testimony. They go on by men's plans and their own plans. Walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Yes, that we just read in the Psalms. From the creation until now, everything has gone along according to the most highest plans. Ain't nothing going wrong. Everything's going along just according to prophecy, according to precepts, according to biblical law, and the books of the prophets. But this, they willingly are ignorant, and that by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made of old, and the earth standing out of the waters and in the waters. You read that in Genesis chapter 1. Whereby the world that was then being overflown with water perished. They don't even believe that. They're teaching science now. Everything in the Bible is a fantasy. They can't even give you an answer about the coronavirus. They give you the vaccine, people still die, but they tell you to take it or you're going to lose your job. Do that make any sense? That's confusion. If the thing don't work, why should I put it in my body? See? Because most of said he's going to put darkness on this kingdom. And he said, Egypt, which is America, going to stumble in their vomit. 
and make wrong decisions. And it says here, verse 7, and, uh, verse 6, Wherefore the world that was then, that then was, being overflown with water perished, but the heavens and earth which are now, there you go right there, the kingdoms of men and the heavens under this heaven that your Lord made right now, in the time of the apostles, in the time of Mahashah, Yahushah, in his time, when they wrote this, and they could fulfill their mission and left these records here for us, as it says in Romans 15 and 4, for things written before time were written for our learning, that we through comfort of the scriptures might have hope. See? But the heavens and earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of unyahawly men. This is why we tell our brothers and sisters to repent, believe in the gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, keep the most high commandments, faithful Yahweh Shai, so you can obtain eternal life and he can save you from the destruction that's coming. The destruction that's coming you cannot be saved by anybody else except Yahweh to Yahweh So when the missiles come and the earth is burning, democracy, republicanism, the heavens that's here now, is going to be what? Burned up. And this is what I'm telling y'all, don't worry. Have sufficiency for today. The wicked going to be destroyed. They're going to be burnt up. This is their destiny. You are not an Edomite. Uh, out of God. <laughs> Thank the most high for that. Come from among them and these other nations because he didn't set it up in his works for that. So give the most high all the hakaha, the glory, and Lama Natal's God of praise that he chose us because he chose us in the mercy. See? So these heavens and earth that's right now are on Yahweh nations and men are going to be burned up. But beloved, be not ignorant of this thing that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So the timeline is in the most high hands. We read last time it's going to be a thousand year reign with Yahweh and the elect of Israel, and those that keep the commandments, are going to get in there. It's the first resurrection. The rest that don't come back, they're going to come back in reincarnation, regeneration. To the ones that make it, they're going to be priests and ordinary citizens in the new kingdom of heaven. And that's what the Lord promised when he says in Romans, all Israel shall be saved. See, a lot of brothers think you're just going to be saved because you're sitting around doing nothing. No. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Faith without works is what? Dead. Just like the body without the spirit is dead. So you have to do something in this truth besides sitting around looking and waiting for the Lord to return because he warns us in the Bible about that. When it says in Isaiah, it says, Where are you that says in that day, let's, let's, let us wait and see and see if the Lord is going to come. Don't wait until the day of the Lord come. And then you say, yeah, I believe. Because he know your heart. And he know what you're doing. See? So let's go to our subject at hand. Revelation chapter 21. Last week we was in Revelation chapter 20. And everything has precept and precept, line upon line. The armies of heaven talk about Babylon, the great, great fall. Peter said, the heaven's going to be on fire. After the third world war, they tell you about uh, Armageddon and Revelation 16, then what happens next? Is it going to be it? Because let me explain something to you. No nation on this planet can live through a nuclear war. They got thousands of atomic bombs with dirty plutonium and uranium in them. If these fools don't understand that, that's why Yahweh got to step in and take them out. You cannot win a nuclear war. If America and Russia win the war by themselves, they can split this earth in half with those bombs. And nobody would win. 
everybody will burn and the earth will split and the most high creation, he has to do it all over again. But he's not going to allow it to happen. He's going to allow the heavens and the earth that's now the powers that be. He's going to let them destroy themselves and he's going to intervene with the day of judgment with the powers of heaven and he's going to keep this earth intact and do what with it? Revelation 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and new earth. So after the third world's war, after the destruction of the nations, Israel is taken up in, in the ships, the ones that he want of the elect, the nations that are saved, meaning the ones going in slavery. Do y'all understand that? Not, oh, the white man going to get saved, or oh, Jesus going to say, no, no. The ones that get saved, meaning preserved and put to the side, he going to preserve some of these nations so we can get our hands on them, like he says in Isaiah. We're going to lay our hands on Edom and Moab and Ammon and all the other nations, and we're going to lay our hands on them because justice has to be served. And the most high is a just power. He that lead them in the captivity going where? They go on in captivity. If your heart ain't in this, and you can I don't think nobody should read these scriptures again. That's justice. All the killings, murders, plundering of our nation. And you think the most high is just gonna let he say, all that he said, all that spoil you shall be a spoil. And all of them shall go on in captivity. That's justice. Not going to these white people begging for reparations for slavery, and now they won't give these uh, other tribes and nations coming over the border money. They didn't even address our plight. You know why? Because our salvation is coming through your heart. And our restoration, according to Acts 3.19, through Masha, and vengeance on our adversaries is through your heart, not politicians. That's why he told that young sister, one of the politicians, I think it was uh, Bernie or one of them guys, she said, Mr. Wayman, can we get reparations? He looked down and said, who are you? You can't get no reparations, little black girl. Come on. He told her no, right on national TV. Because we ain't getting no reparations for slavery from them. It's coming from the most high Brachatayahalo. The anointed Savior. It ain't coming through them. They're going to be in chains in this new heaven and earth. See? For the first heaven and first earth will pass away, and there was no more sea, meaning that the earth going to look different. It ain't going to look like it looked now. You remember the flood? The earth used to be in one piece, and water was around it. The Most High broke it up in his works and tell you that in Genesis. And he broke it up and made the continents we have today. Look at the continents. South America could fit right into the side of Africa. All the mother pieces could go up in there and the white man gave it a name. Pangean or something like that. And that's when Adam and them was on the earth and there was giants in the earth and there were big dinosaurs and big huge trees back then and creatures walking on earth. Man was huge. Now today it's a whole different world. So in this new earth and heaven down here on this planet, it's not going to be any more seas. And that giant saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride and dawn for her husband. So in the vision, he saw this new kingdom coming down. The most high guy coming out of the heavens. He, he said it looks like it's going to come from heaven because the way he's going to have it set up in Jerusalem it's going to look like something that came out of the third and fourth dimension where the Lord is. Because these kingdoms that the Lord made on this earth with these wicked empires and showing us the negative side of life it's not going to be compared to the new Jerusalem. And it's going to take place in the land of so-called Canaan which is Jerusalem. This is why it says in Isaiah, the controversy of Zion. The Most High will bring on what? 
the third world's water, tear up every nation and blast them out of power. So he can put his people and his shop back in his order. Because white man's order is that of Satan. His God is Satan. His church systems are Satan. Why do you think they run out of Afghanistan? Nation building, they ran and left them people over there. I just seen some Afghanistanis in the bank serving me. They put them on the base, they funnel them out to the system, say, what can you do? I can work in a bank, Mr. White Man, okay, I'll put you in a bank over here. The Mexicans and Ecuadorians and all the other tribes when they come in, they're gonna say, what can you do? Mr. White Man, we got your t-shirt, all right, get the barrel and pick those peanuts and peas. Work on them highways. And you gonna see it in your, your town. We've been here already. We're gonna go outside and see Mexicans with hard hats, Ecuadorians and them other nations. You wanna go, where they come from? Those are the ones coming over the border. See, they got the media screaming and crying out. The most high this man is a liberal. He wants to make money. And he ain't gonna pay you a decent wage because he got some new slaves coming here. And they tell you Revelation 18, there's slaves here, don't they? So those are the new slaves that's coming. They ain't gonna say nothing, cause where they coming from is hell. So you give them five dollars an hour, like they do in China, and got their factories over there, then they put the stuff on the boat, the Chinese government send it over here, and the white man sells it around the world and in America, and makes billions of dollars, and like the scripture says, the rich rule over the poor. The president of the United States, had to ask everybody, can you please pay your taxes? Pay a portion? You know why? Because he ain't in control of them. Those are the elite, wicked ass Illuminati that's in charge of this country that oppress us and got their children in schools and parochial schools and setups that come down to corporate America and go back to their secret societies and you are not allowed to go in there. So there must be a change, and your power is going to bring it. See what it says? Prepared as a bride the door for her husband. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of your hour is with me. So the most highest tabernacle is going to be on this earth. Like the first tabernacle. But this time, it's going to be with what men? Everybody? Like they turn you in the church? And you shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their power. Now, if you go to church, that sounds like the Lord going to save everybody. But let's read on and see what he's talking about. And Yahweh shall wipe away the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. No more death. You're going to live for a duration of time. And most I said we're going to get eternal life. On this side of the earth, we went from Noah's time, 500, 600 years, to Methuselah, 1,000 years. It's recorded in the Bible. So this time, it's eternal life. And you're gonna set up a whole new way of living on this planet that you can't even imagine. See what it says here? Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This world here is set up in what? It's narrow. Here you go. Let's go to the book of Ezra. Ezra saw it, and he spoke about it. He said, this world that we got here is not set up like, in, in, uh, it's going to be like, not like the kingdom. This new world is going to be paradise. The old world was filled with what? Here you go right here. Uh, Second Ezra's chapter 7 and verse 11. For for their sakes I made the world for Israel. And when Adam to transgress my statutes, which was decreed, which now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. You hear that? Because of the sin of Adam. Okay? Um, full of sorrow and travail, and there was but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the 
entrances of the elder world were wide and sure. See? Now you're going back to that. Because what? The most high set up this negative. He's teaching us a lesson. Without the laws of the most high on this planet Earth, what do you get? Sin, destruction, pain, rich ruling over the poor, murder, rapists, pollution of the air, idols, injustice. That comes from this evil world. Ran by what? Evil men. Ungodly men. You understand? So the next world ain't gonna be that way. Revelation uh, chapter uh, 21. And it says what? Five. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right? For these words are true and faithful. That's what your house said. Everything is going to be made new, brothers and sisters. You're going to be made new. What it says in Corinthians. At the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. At the twinkling of an eye. Let's go to Corinthians, right? We're going to be changed. Don't forget this. This is what we're opening. It ain't here now, but it's coming. <laughs> here you go. Everybody go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And start at verse 51. It is written. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. So when the change come, there's going to be a physical change of us. We shall all, we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that means when the last trump is blown, that means the most high's works are finished, and he's bringing in this new kingdom, and the change is going to come, the salvation for Israel, and many, many great things is coming out. See what it says here? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruptible, incorruption, and the mortal Put on immortality. Y'all hear that? No more death, man. All this was set up to show us the negative side of life. The unlawful world of the Edomites and the nations. And the most high limited everything down here. So in the new Jerusalem that's coming very soon, he said... Verse 6, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is office and found uh, of the fountain of water of life, uh, of life freely. What does that mean? Everybody go to Isaiah 55. When you come to the knowledge, brothers should not charge you any money to get this information. And if they do, they are a liar. You should not be ripping off the congregation. Don't be ripping off the brothers and the sisters and lying to them. Jermaine Grant, Comforter, Kofi. God, the name is that for an Israelite priest. You're a man or a mouse. 